Hello, I'm Erlen McGilvery, one of the teachers in Veritas Scholars Academy, and I'm here to talk about logic, both uh, what courses we run in it and, and what distinguishes the two types of logic uh, that you can study. So uh, we can divide logic into two. So one is informal logic and one is formal logic, starting with informal logic. And this is where if you're taking logic one Veritas or logic two Canon Academic Press, uh, this is where you'll be exposed to informal logic. It's called informal because it deals with everyday arguments, everyday speech, everyday life. So it's particularly focused upon things such as fallacies. So these are where uh, you have errors in thinking, popular errors in thinking, such as, to use a, a popular one, ad hominem abusive. That's where instead of attacking the issue at hand, you attack the person. So I might say, uh, or someone might say, uh, their their policy for the new road system in the town is wrong. How do I know? Well, they've, they've got silly hair. Therefore, therefore, the proposal in the road system is, is wrong. So uh, fallacies are, uh, or informal fallacies, popular wrong ways of arguing or trying to um, distract from the issue at hand or hide the issue at hand. And so both Logic One Veritas and uh, Logic Canon Academic Press, they will explore... Uh, fallacies. Within Logic 2 Canon Academic Press we also get into uh, conspiracy theories so the students will present on conspiracy theories or urban legends uh, and there'll be quite a few debates as well. It also looks at how do you build up arguments in everyday speech that are logically coherent. So how do you um, how do you go about that and particularly uh, there you use uh, Aristotle's common topics so using things such as analogies, testimonies and how do you build these up in a logical way, uh, an, an, in an accurate way. Uh, in Logic One Veritas, there's not really a focus on uh, conspiracy theory, so we, we do look at uh, things such as aliens, which kind of runs through the course uh, as a way of thinking logically about claims. Uh, but uh, what distinguishes that is that we look at other things such as cognitive biases. So these are ways of thinking that again distract from the truth or, or, or prevent us from maybe getting to the truth. So for example, uh, confirmation bias, pointing out that we're far more likely to accept a claim if it's something we more readily would agree with. So we're, we're, we're less questioning uh, of claims that are being made that we that we agree with. Uh, and, and things to do with memory. So if, if we hear something uh, more often, more frequently, more, more, more likely to accept it, or indeed more recently, uh, we're more likely uh, to accept it. So um, that's Logic 1 Veritas and Logic 2 Canon Academic Press. Uh, if you go down the Veritas route, you would study informal logic uh, first. So there's Logic 1 Veritas, informal logic. Uh, if you do the Canon Academic Press route, uh, that's that second. And it, it usually is the case that students will find informal logic uh, the, more, the more easier. Um, of the, the two types of logic. Formal logic is very different and usually we'll draw an analogy between it and say a course like algebra where you're getting very precise, very concrete rules that you're applying and you will reach a, a certainty if you're if you're applying the rules correctly you'll know for certain that this is the right answer. Informal logic is about probabilities, formal logic is about certainties and it works by uh, or in part by taking propositions uh, uh, and we, to use an analogy, it's almost like sentence diagramming them. By using these different rules, we're really going to look really carefully uh, at the propositions that are being made and using, you know, what has been built up within deductive logic, these, these tools, these rules to see whether we think this is uh, valid or not. So, for example, to use a not profound um, uh, argument you might make, uh, all mammals have lungs, a whale is a mammal, therefore, what do we know? A whale will, will have lungs. So uh, looking at it, and, and this is where you get into things such as syllogisms, uh, where you have two premises, then a conclusion. It's about how do you build up a syllogism? Uh, how do you tell if 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 you have a, an, an, a, a one that's invalid or not sound? And the end result is that you can use tools such as deductive logic it's it's not used in every day but it's used very much for example in philosophical arguments so it's used in uh, technical philosophical arguments for the existence of god for example uh, so they're, they're they feel very different courses uh, they're or, or very different 
um, types of logic. I should also mention associate logic. So it actually looks at both of these. So it looks, it starts, uh, the first half is looking at informal logic and it takes the Canon Academic Press books and then halfway through, and again, uh, sticking with Canon Academic Press books, it then switches to formal logic. So it looks at, um, it looks at both. So it's, it's um, in that sense, it's quite an intense course. So there's a lot more to say about informal and formal logic and the various courses, but hopefully that's a, a useful broad overview um, of the distinctions.